now we go to the one-way ANOVA. We use one-way ANOVA to determine if there is a significant difference among three or more population means when the sample sizes are equal or unequal. One-way ANOVA involves only one factor. From your questions, you can find one-way ANOVA have one independent variable and one dependent variable. So, the independent variable also will be the factor in your experiment. Before we can solve the ANOVA problem, we must have the assumptions. For one way ANOVA, we have three different assumptions. The first one is the population under study follow normal distribution. The second one is the sample is independent from the other sample. And the last one is all the populations from which the sample value are obtained have the same unknown population variance. This is the tabulation of your data. This is how you sort your data. So from this table, you can see that this is the treatment and this is the replicates. So from the rows, you can see that how many treatment you have. Treatment number one, treatment number two, treatment number three until K. And then from the column, you can see how many replications you have. Replication number one, replication number two, replication number three, until n replications. And then the last column here represent the total for each rows. Total row number one, total row number two, until total for the last row. Same goes to the each column. You have the total column number one, total column number two, until total for the last column. X dot dot here represent the big total. This is the general model for your ANOVA model. Sij equal mu plus alpha i plus epsilon ij where i equal r uh, 1 2 3 dot 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 until k and j equal 1 2 dot dot until n okay so sij is the j observation from the i treatment mu is the overall mean alpha i is the i treatment effect epsilon ij is the random error k is the number of treatments and n is the number of replicates so what is a uh, number of treatments you can understand number of treatments as a number of different method used in your experiment for example if your experiment use three different method that means you have three different treatments in your experiments or let's say you have a flu and you have a fever so the doctor will give you two different medicine one for flu and one for fever that means you have two different treatments and then you have to take that medicine for um, for five days so that means you have to repeat that uh, treatment for five days so now the number of treatments is two and then the number of replications is five two rules should be fulfilled a we assume the random error approximately normally dis identically distributed and b we assume the sum of all treatment effects is zero or all treatment effects are the same so this is how you construct your hypothesis you must have the h null and the h1 so h null is the main hypothesis that we want to test h1 is the alternative hypothesis so you can have your h null mu1 equal mu2 equal until equal mu k 
your K here is depend on how many treatment you have. If you have 10 treatments, so you can have H now mu 1 equal mu 2 equal mu 3 equal mu 4 until equal dot 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 until mu 10. Okay, so your your mu depend on how many treatment you have. So what is the meaning of H now? Okay, you can understood is as all population means are equal or no difference between the population means or no variation in means among groups. For your H1, for the alternative hypothesis, H1 is mu i not equal mu j. For at least one i not equal j, where i and j equal 1, 2 until k. So we can understand H1 as at least one population mean is different. Or there are difference between the population means. Or not all population means are equal. Or there is a treatment effect between treatment I and treatment J. Variation in means among groups. This is the general form of your ANOVA table. As you can see that, the first row represent for the treatment. The second row represent for the error. And the third row represent for the total. For the column, the first column represent for the sum square value. The second column represent for the degrees of freedom value. The third column represent for the mean square value. The fourth column represent for the F test value. And the last column represent for the critical value. So you must complete this ANOVA table before you can have your decision and conclusion. To complete this ANOVA table, first we need to complete the first column. We need to find the SSTR and then we need to find the SSE and we need to find the SST. As you can see, to find the SSTR, you need to use the formula and then SST also need to need to solve using the formula but for the SSE is SST minus SSTR okay so this value minus this value and then you can have the SSE next we move on the degree of freedom the second column for the first one is k minus 1 number of treatment minus 1 the second one is capital n minus k capital n is the total data you have minus number of uh, number of treatment you have in your questions and the last one is capital n minus 1 number of total sample minus 1 for the third column mean square value you must find the mean square for your treatment as you can see that mean square treatment equal SSTR divide K minus 1 so that means this value divide this value equal mean square for treatment next we move on to the mean square error equal SSE divide by capital N minus K that means this value divide this value equal MSE. For the F test value equal MSTR divide by MSE. That means this value divide this value and then you can have your F test value. The critical value is the easiest one. You can have this value from your statistical table. And then remember your F alpha is F alpha comma 
K minus 1, comma, capital N minus K. Okay. And then, we will reject H null. H null will be rejected if your F test larger than your F alpha. So, the, the decision is reject H null. Now, we look at the formula to find the SST, SSTR and SSA. The first one we want to find is the SST. So, SST equal x11 square. x11 square is your first data square plus the x12 square. x12 square is your second data plus third data plus fourth data until plus the last data square minus 1 over capital N. Capital N is your total data, total sample. 1 over n x dot dot square x dot dot is your big total ok don't forget the square value here you solve this one using this formula and then you can have your first value SST the second value we want to find is the SSTR SSTR equal x one dot square this value is the total for your first rows over n1 n1 is number of replication for your first treatment plus the total for the second treatment over the number of replication for the second treatment plus until the total for the last treatment over the number of replication for the last treatment minus 1 over n 1 over capital N same 1 over your total data multiply as dot dot square your big total this one is the big total you solve this one using this formula and then you can have your second value for your SSTR the third one we want to find is the SSC SSC is very easy after you have the SST you can minus SST minus SSTR and then you can have the SSC so make sure your SST value and then and your SSTR value is correct then you can have your SSE correct value